Hello, and welcome to Webinar Wednesday. My name is Tammy Serrano. I am the Training and Instructional Design Facilitator for IPDE. And I am here today with Mr. Alexander Pass from Miami-Dade Public School, who will be facilitating our webinar. Mr. Pass has an extensive background in healthcare administration before transitioning over into education. He is currently working on implementing and teaching the healthcare IET program across Miami-Dade County. Mr. Pass is also one of our state trainers. Today's webinar will focus on presenting IET programs to your ESOL and EBE students. But before we get started, let's cover some housekeeping rules. If you have questions, please type them into the Q&A option. Your microphones are muted. You will remain in listen-only mode. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be archived and available on the IPTE website within 48 hours. I will now pass it on to our presenter, Alex. Thank you very much, Ms. Serrano, and I want to uh, welcome you all to this presentation. And today's goal will be to get more or less a better understanding of how we can present the concept of integrated education and training to our ESOL and our ABE students. Uh, sometimes this can be a challenge. What we want to show you is just some, some best practices from around the state, uh, some suggestions from the Department of Education, and different things that we can implement. Um, as Ms. Serrano mentioned, um, I uh, am not an educator uh, by trade. I am from the healthcare industry. Uh, I transitioned into education about two years ago, and this world of IET has been something that has been extremely interesting, and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, implementing it across uh, Miami-Dade County uh, with the help of our great team at the district. So let's go over today's agenda. Uh, we're going to start off by looking at the changing Florida immigration and education landscape. We're going to dive deep into all of these points. We're also going to get to know the educational background of your current and new students. We're going to present the IET concepts to current and new students. We're going to ensure that the integrated learning model is successful. We're gonna review some of the measurable skill gains that your districts could benefit from by offering these programs. We're gonna talk a little bit about working with community partners to establish effective IET programs. And ultimately, we're gonna talk about transitioning these students once they complete their language and IET programs with you into hopefully a technical or community college. Now, we are scheduled uh, for one hour today, but I, I would like to leave some time at the end to have a bit of an interactive Q&A session because I know that there's a lot of questions out there uh, on the IET uh, concept. So let's get going. So let's start off in talking about the immigration landscape because in adult education, uh, we're mainly concentrating on the ESOL and ABE component. So we're teaching language to folks that are recently arriving in our country. Um, their backgrounds can be incredibly diverse. Their education can be diverse as well. So Florida is one of the uh, leaders uh, in that we're receiving so many new immigrants into our state. And we as adult educators must be able to adapt and encourage our students to advance their language skills while making gains to join the workforce. IET, or Integrated Education and Training, presents us with a unique opportunity to be able to meet both of these goals. Um, I'm sure that all of you across the state have noticed in these past two years that your enrollment has just gone through the roof. Um, sometimes it's a struggle to absorb all these students. Uh, you're going to see that um, the intake and the registration is going to be one of the most important points of the IET journey. So we're going to help you along with these uh, concepts and plans. Now, before we dive too deep into the material, I always like to start off with getting the basics down. Uh, in adult education, we have a, a, a very unique workforce in that a lot of our educators might be part-time, uh, they're coming in or, or they're or transitioning to, through programs. So I always like to start meetings with establishing what is an IET. So an IET is going to mix and co-teach the adult education and literacy component. You're gonna also be teaching workforce preparation and you're gonna be doing the workforce training. Now, the difference here in, uh, compared to a traditional CTE model is that we're doing these at the same time. 
Uh, I've, I've gotten a lot of questions as we've started implementing and, well, what's the difference between the CTE and the IET? Isn't it all working towards an industry credential or a license? Yes, you are. But traditionally, it would take a student about a year to complete the full ESOL and ABE component, depending on their proficiency and how quickly they could get their, uh, their examinations in. And that's when they would start their workforce training. The concept of IET is pretty much knocking a year off of that. And that when your site, when your administration team feels that the students are ready to enter the IET, depending on their ESOL level, you're gonna start getting that workforce training in. And you're gonna have, uh, in most cases, two instructors, but we'll dive into that a little bit later. Now, in these IET programs, some fundamentals that we need to be sure uh, that we're focusing on. And that is that all the activities we're performing in these programs must be of sufficient intensity and quality. What does that mean? Uh, we're talking about offering, I'll give you the example of perhaps a phlebotomy program. You need to make sure that the, the resources that you're using, the frameworks that are uh, provided by the state, the single sets of learning objectives, that you are following those with fidelity because these students will be uh, in most cases, presenting to a state board for their examination for the license. So as educators, we need to make sure that the program that we're offering is of high quality. And all of these uh, IETs that have been developed by the state are based on the most rigorous research available, uh, particularly with respect to improving reading, writing, mathematics, and English proficiency. So most of you have already seen the single sets of learning objectives provided by the state. And you will notice that these are uh, structured in a way that makes uh, sense for the student to be able to focus on both components of their uh, new method of instruction. They're going to be learning their different competencies, whether it's based on the CASAS or TABE exam. And they're also going to be focusing on competencies that will help them on their career path and on their road to the overall goal of their industry license or credential. Another important point is that both of these, and, and most of us know this, need to occur simultaneously within the overall scope of the IET program. A big selling point, uh, which is something that uh, we, can is, we can present to our student is the time-saving aspect of these programs. Like I mentioned before, you're taking a two-year process and condensing it into a year or a year and a half, depending on student proficiency. And the way we do that is that we offer both sets of learning objectives simultaneously. And as mentioned before, we need to be using occupationally relevant instructional materials, supplies, and hopefully uh, you'll have instructors that are, that are very tied into their current industry. And as we mentioned before, uh, all of these programs need to be aligned with the standards for adult education as provided with the state. A concept that we're going to be introducing here, which a lot of you might have heard of before, is that of the career pathway. Uh, the state of Florida is presenting uh, that all of these programs need to be a form of uh, on the road to a career pathway. An example would be, as we've mentioned, uh, a phlebotomist will lead into a medical assistant. A medical assistant will lead into a licensed practical nurse. A licensed practical nurse will lead into a registered nurse. So for each of the tracks, for each of the different clusters that the state of Florida has designated that can be offered as IET, there needs to be a demonstrated career pathway. This is another uh, method that you can present in your orientations with your new students. And it's also a big selling point in that they are uh, recent immigrants to this country, they are learning the language, and they're gonna get started on their career. They're gonna get that first licensure, whether it's in information technology, whether it's in healthcare, uh, whether it's in automotive, welding, HVAC, whatever they choose to pursue, the career path should, will, should be established and should be presented to the student at the time of registration. Now, looking at IETs, how are these put together? Uh, a lot of 
a lot of us are already beyond this step, but I like to go over it so that we can see how we are where we are. So step number one is that you need to design these classes with the learner and community needs in mind. What are we talking about here? If you have a student population that the majority are into the um, automotive trades or into welding or into construction, then that's what you need to start thinking of. You also need to meet with your industry partners and say, hey, what are the uh, high skill, high demand jobs that you're looking for that you're having difficulty uh, finding employees for? Once you match up those two components, your students and your partners, you will have the elements to be able to succeed with a high quality IET. And the third step, which is kind of where we are now uh, across a lot of districts in the state, is that we need to adopt a continuous improvement approach. Most of you on this uh, seminar have probably already started IET programs. Um, and now you're at the point where you're self-evaluating. Are my programs successful? Do I have high enrollment? Uh, are the students able to pass on to that next functional level of, of uh, English proficiency? So a lot of questions that we need to start asking ourselves, and we're all arriving at these answers a little bit differently, but our challenges are very much shared. So let's talk about the recent immigration into the state of Florida. Um, as you see here, this is all from the Pew Research Center. Across the United States, the majority of our immigrants are coming into our country speaking Spanish. Uh, I can speak to Miami-Dade County. Our, our biggest home country languages are Spanish and Creole. They might be different depending on the district that you're in. Um, the main focus here is to realize that the majority of our students in the adult education world are, are speaking languages other than English but are also looking with the, the way that the world of employment is changing to get skills that will benefit them in their search for employment. Here's another very interesting point that we've noticed in Miami and in traveling the state, I've, I've spoken to other colleagues and they're noticing the same thing. Our students are arriving through our doors with a lot of prior knowledge from their home countries. Um, from personal experience, I can tell you that in Miami-Dade County, uh, we have a large population of physicians, nurses, lawyers, teachers, and they have completed all of their university work in their home countries. So if we look at this uh, table here from the Pew Research Center, once again, we see that there has been a steady rise in immigrants uh, with bachelors and also immigrants with postgraduate degrees. And in just my time in the education world, um, it's been astonishing, uh, the rise in the students that are showing up and they'll tell you, I'm a general practitioner, I am a physician, I am a registered nurse in my home country. So the challenge was, how can we balance that prior knowledge, but also teach them the way of work in the United States, and obviously teach them the English language itself. So as mentioned, our enrollment across the state is on the rise with students that are presenting with increased professional skills. Our schools in the state of Florida already count on excellent uh, ESOL and CTE and ABE programs that have already been established. So we know how to get that part of it done. We've been doing well, and we've been doing it for years, decades. But now it's time to bridge that gap. Now it's time to bring the world of CTE and ESOL together. And we're doing it through the IET concept. We're doing that integrated education. So in order to have a successful IET uh, and to market it appropriately to your students that are in ESOL or ABE, there's a couple of steps that we need to make sure that we're following. The most important one, or one of the most important one, is going to be your pre-enrollment phase. This involves having effective outreach and recruitment sets and recruitment events that will set the learner expectations for the program. So what are examples of these? Uh, many of your districts perhaps uh, set up career fairs, or you could uh, do uh, trips to your local employers, your local partners, and start recruiting for the programs. Something that our schools are also doing is we're setting up orientations regarding the IET program for our existing students. 
uh, and this branches into the enrollment. Uh, we found that the best time to start presenting these classes is perhaps not right when the student is registering. Um, normally, that's a, a process that's a little bit stressful for them. They might be new to this country. A lot of these students are, you know, they've, they've been in the country for a matter of months and they're dealing with immigration issues. They're dealing with finance. They're dealing with finding housing. So they walk through our doors and they tell us, hey, I want to learn English. And that's fine. You can sign them up. But then as you go through the orientation process, this is where perhaps you can start presenting. Hey, for those of you interested in information technology, or for those of you interested in healthcare, we're offering these classes that can put you on a path to a credential within a year. And it's important to emphasize to the student that it's, they're not gonna be shortchanged in any manner. They're still going to receive their English instruction. They're still gonna go through all the levels of ESOL, and, but with the added benefit that they will have that license at the end. Are they gonna have the highest license available? No, You'll, you guys will find that most of the IET programs focus on the basic uh, level of each of these fields. It's a, it's a way to get your foot in the door to a lot of these industries. But we found that students are very appreciative of the fact once you present it to them that way. And their main apprehension is that they just really want to focus on learning English. Now, a part of ensuring success is going to be participation, individual counseling, a lot of support. These students will require a lot of support because they're going to have a lot more going on than just your basic ESOL level three student or ABE student. They have more things that they need to keep track of. So it's important that you guys as a school uh, set up individual, individual counseling and support service. And at the end of the day, it's gonna be all about transition. Uh, is the individual learner succeeding in passing their certification? Is the individual learner succeeding in passing their CASAS or TABE exam? And once they get to that point, how are you ensuring uh, that you're not losing them within the pathway of your district? How are you ensuring that you're taking them from your adult education site where they're learning their language into the technical college or into a community college to further their education along the career path? So just some points uh, for the uh, initial orientation with the student. As mentioned, these orientations and intake sessions are going to be critical. This will determine whether you have an enrollment that is sustainable um, and a successful program or whether you have a struggle to try to fill these classrooms. It's important to, to recognize that once you get the IET programs, these are programs that are going to require a lot more resources. So you're going to be uh, needing different sorts of equipment, supplies, uh, the textbooks are more uh, technical, um, a little bit more difficult, and uh, you're obviously going to need additional instructors. And these are going to be instructors that are based in industry. So it's important that by the time you get going, you don't have a class with maybe one student or no students. You want to ensure that you have a good feeder program. Your orientations are doing well. You're presenting all the aspects of what could be potential pitfalls to the student, and you're also presenting uh, the potential avenues to success for the student so that it's not an intimidating process for them. You need to market the fact that this is a quicker road to their ultimate career goals. What does that mean? Most students, when they arrive to this country, they, no one's goal is, is to work in a warehouse for, for an extended period of time or a supermarket. Those are great opportunities to, to start to work in these countries, but ultimately the student will want to focus on a field that they enjoy, or perhaps a field that they have experience in, in their home countries. So you market that fact. You can mention to a student, if you're an engineer in your home country, we offer different automotive programs. Uh, we offer different biomedical technician programs, depending on what your district is, is going to choose to offer. You also want to emphasize that no corners will be cut in the delivery of instruction. As we mentioned, uh, in my experience, the common trepidation with students is that they feel that if they focus on the IET, they're not going to learn English in a similar way to their colleagues that are just focusing on the ESOL. 
you need to be able to lay out to the student how the instruction is going to be delivered. What are the methods to ensure that they're successful? What are the different forms of support that they can get? Perhaps they have increased tutoring. Perhaps they have uh, different sorts of instructor assistant or home learning that your district is implementing. Like I said, it's going to be different uh, for each of us, but the goal will be the same. Another thing that can help you really market and sell these programs to your ESOL students is demonstrating prior success stories and testimonials. Uh, we were just up in Pinellas County um, and they were mentioning a student that was a participant in their drone IET, which is a very fascinating program, but the student was struggling uh, to finish their, their high school, their GED, and they were also struggling to get that drone licensure in. They, they focused heavily on that student, they provided a lot of support, and at the end of the day, they got the student to meet his goals. So that is an obvious success story that that district can really market. And at the end of the day, the IET programs is something uh, that deals heavily with marketing. I almost call it a sales pitch during orientation. Because even though we know that it's gonna be ultimately very beneficial to the student, you're asking them to take on a little bit of extra coursework and a lot more home studying. So we need to be able to sell these success stories. We need to be able to, to have these on our social media, our Instagram, our Twitters. Our, our, a lot of districts use community flyers and outreach and they, and they get it out to their community. So make sure that you're tracking your students and make sure that you're highlighting those that are successful. And we're always focusing on the, path, on the fact that we need to be placing these students on the career pathway. So mention to them, you can start off um, as an intro automotive technician. You can go on to be ASC certified. You can then become a master technician. Show them that pathway. Demonstrate the fact that this is gonna be a, a, an incredible benefit to them. Now, here's the, the hard part of, of IET. IET is not for every single student that walks in your door. And this is a decision that you will need to make as a district, as a school, and it goes right down to your instructors. Uh, when you decide which IET programs you guys will want to pursue, you need to start setting an established criteria for how you're gonna bring these students into your programs. Um, not all programs are the same. I'll go back to the example of phlebotomy because it's one that a lot of us are doing and it's pretty simple. A student in ESOL level three will probably be able to successfully complete the phlebotomy curriculum as presented by the state. Why is that so? It's because the medical terminology is not as deeply rooted or as technical as perhaps a, an air conditioning or HVAC course. Uh, you need to focus on the instruction that needs to be delivered and how technical uh, the English language component is going to become. It's very difficult to ask an ESOL two or three student to read through those extensive technical manuals for things like HVAC, plumbing, um, information technology, medical billing and coding. So it's important to look at the differences in these programs. Um, another uh, common question that I've come across in, in my travels is that folks might think that all IET uh, programs are structured the same, and they're not. They're very different. So each IET uh, pathway or program is going to have different hour requirements, different testing, uh, different criteria that the student is going to meet to be able to be successful in. Uh, an example like EKG technician is a lot simpler uh, of a program for a student to complete than the medical billing and coding. It's shorter, uh, it's more concise, the instruction is easier to deliver, and the testing is very clear and is very attainable for these students. If you go into things like pharmacy technician, that's when you start getting into these longer programs with a little more requirements for uh, licensure. Now, it's important to realize the longer programs might be right for your district because that might be what your community partners are asking for. I know up north, the uh, Advent Health does a lot of work 
uh, with our local school districts, and they might tell you as a district, hey, I really, really need pharmacy technicians to feed into my hospitals and local clinics. Well, as a district, you need to be able to respond to that, and you need to meet that need and be able to work with your students, but do know that it will be perhaps a little more intense. And that's where we go back to our orientation with our students. You need to be upfront, you need to be transparent with them as to the length of these programs, the cost of these programs, and the uh, English level that they need to attain before uh, successfully completing the program. Okay, sorry, had a little bit of an issue with my microphone here. So the program registration and intake forms, these take different uh, shapes and, and fashions uh, district to district across the state of Florida. Uh, some districts choose to input these into an electronic file or an electronic platform, such as Miami-Dade County. Some districts are using forms and, with files that travel with the student. The, the main point, no matter how you're doing it, is that we just need to periodically meet with these students. We need to ensure because it can be very overwhelming for them. And what you want to do is before the student becomes frustrated or overwhelmed, you need to be able to sit with them for, it doesn't have to be long, a 10 to 15 minute just chat coaching session, see where they're at, see where their most recent CASAS exam uh, led them, see if they're kind of understanding the technical instruction. Uh, in order to be able to successfully retain them. And once again, this is a big marketing opportunity for your schools. So the students uh, will take their experiences with you and word of mouth will travel. Uh, we're already seeing examples of that down here. And I've been talking to colleagues. Once you start these programs and you start having your first success stories, they're going to grow upon themselves. So as mentioned uh, earlier, uh, career pathways is going to be crucial, critical to the concept of IET. Uh, this uh, resource was taken from mycareerpathways.org, and it shows you the example of a health science student. And this is something that we present normally during the orientation to those students interested in health sciences. So you see, it presents the initial step, the components that go into uh, the education, the schedule, and you should mention the salary for your local community. So you outline the path where a certified nursing assistant will branch into a medical assistant and you start seeing the bump in salary. The MA will branch into patient care te technician. Uh, patient care technician will branch into a practical nurse and the practical nurse will branch into a registered nurse. So we see that these credentials as the students go through our programs are stacking upon themselves. This is another great uh, marketing position that we can present to the student. All the time that they are investing with you, whether it be in their English classes or their IET classes are an investment into their future. They're going to see immediate uh, gains on their licensures, on their English uh, competency level, and it's going to be overall an investment into their future. Okay, so now we're moving on to, I mentioned before that it could be overwhelming for our students to have to do both of these components at the same time. There's things that we can do as, uh, as schools, as educators, as administrators that can make this process smoother. So this is the part where we focus on the integration of, the, of our IET programs. And three strategies that you could uh, choose to pursue are to include intentional activities that orient learners to the full career pathway, including on-ramps, off-ramps, transferable skills to other industries. Um, we've seen sometimes schools will even lay it out like a, road, like a map, like an actual interstate map. And it's very interesting to uh, see different folks presenting it to the students in that if you just want that initial certification and you're fine with that, you're fine with what you're making, well, that's perfectly okay. So on this road to your career goal, you can go ahead and take that off ramp. Now, if in the future you choose to pursue it, uh, once their family situation or whatever they have going on in their lives kind of stabilizes, 
they can get back onto the on-ramp and continue their education towards those additional licensures. We mentioned counseling is gonna be incredibly important, whether you have career coaches, um, transfer specialists, uh, folks with your technical colleges who work with your students. It's going to be very important, like I said, to meet with them per periodically and set goals for these students. Uh, you can meet with the student, look over their testing reports and say, okay, uh, John Doe, uh, we would love for you to be at an ESOL level four in three to four months time. We expect you to test uh, around the state and we, we would love for you to start advancing on that journey. Why is that important? Because it's important for our students to have something tangible, something that they have on paper or in an electronic format that they can kind of follow. You don't just want people registering in your classes and then kind of just being a bit aimless uh, until hopefully they pass or hoping not that they, they, they fall out of programs. When you kind of touch base with them periodically, you're ensuring that they, they feel the support uh, they feel uh, if they need the assistance, they know that it's available and it's going to overall make the, the, the programs more successful because word will get out. The third point that we want to do here is that we want to integrate support activities into the curriculum. Examples, bring industry uh, representatives into the classrooms or set up uh, experiences where these students can shadow professionals in the field. I know that uh, some of our programs, such as uh, automotive technician, uh, diesel technology, different things that we're doing in Miami-Dade County, there's a lot of industry support, and there's a lot of advisory committees or, or just uh, relationships that we can establish where those folks can come into our classrooms, show them what a day in the life is like, and just overall sell these programs even more to our students. I can't emphasize enough that a big part of these of these programs is gonna be the continual um, reassurance of the students that this is going to lead to your goal. This is gonna to lead to uh, an improved quality of life. You're gonna be earning higher salaries. You're gonna be more educated. You're gonna learn skills that you would not be attaining if it weren't for these programs. Now, some challenges. As mentioned, for many students, this will be a change of pace. Um, because if you're marketing it to some of your existing students, they're probably used to having their language instruction four times a week, uh, probably during the nighttime, and they, they take their CASAS exam or their TABE exam uh, in the middle of the trimester, or it's a more, it's a slower pace. So now you're asking them to keep that, and you're also adding the full technical component to it. So some uh, will feel overwhelmed, but that's where we step in for that support. IET should be presented as an added resource to their educational journey. Uh, it should be presented to the student, hey, you would normally just take the technical class, but we're gonna provide that extra level of support where you're gonna have a language instructor there as well to help you on your educational journey. So if there's vocabulary, uh, for example, in an HVAC, if they don't understand the process of what a relay is or different wiring components, they're going to have that English level, uh, that English uh, instructor there to help them on their way. Now, speaking of the co-teaching models, um, let's get into how we are actually doing this across the state. How are we bringing together both of these instructors, or in some cases, one instructor, and teaching uh, one component? A big part of this is going to be differentiated instruction based on the competencies that the student uh, might be deficient in. It's going to be very important for the instructors that are presenting the material uh, to be able to know how to pinpoint what the student needs to focus on. Because as we've mentioned, there's a bit less time to cover the same material. So we need to be very precise, very specific, and very. Uh, we need to tailor the instruction to, to each student now more than ever. Okay, so I wanted to go over um, one of the concepts that perhaps some uh, adult education instructors struggle with. Now, depending on your district, you are probably going with a co-teaching model where you have one instructor that just focuses 
on the language and you have one instructor that is just focusing on the IET or CTE component. And this is new for a lot of instructors. It's the co-teaching concept. Um, I've had instructors reach out to me and say that where the English instructor says, I don't want to become a teaching assistant. And that's not the message that you should be uh, presenting to your teachers. You're going to see uh, a bit later in the presentation that the English component is just as an, an important metric as the licensure component to the overall evaluation of whether your IET program is successful or not. So both instructors need to feel appreciated and both instructors need to have a good relationship uh, in that they are able to plan out these classes together, uh, support each other. There's ways that the technical instructor can support those ESOL uh, competencies or those TAPE competencies. And there's certainly ways that the language instructor can support the technical competencies. So it's getting that relationship going um, it falls down to, you know, having good chemistry, like a lot of things in education and business. It is all about the people. So we have a short video here uh, where we're going to present. It's from the Washington State Board of Community and Technical Colleges. And it's showing you a class where you have the instructor on the bottom right is presenting the technical component of the class. And the instructor on the top left is focusing on vocabulary and language. So let's take a look at this and you'll see their dynamic and how they're working together. What is a ratio? How many children in, in our industry, how many children um, does, can a teacher be responsible for at the same time? A family child care provider can re be responsible for a maximum of how many children? Six. Six, that's right. And if you have infants, you can only have how many infants if you're family child care? Two, that's right. If you are in a center, a child care center, how many infants or toddlers, let's do infants first, how many infants can you do? I can have four to one teacher. Four to one teacher? What about if I have a toddler classroom, they're over 12 months old? Seven, no, four. Seven, very good way. Can you seven. imagine seven toddlers in one classroom? So I want, I want to point out, I want you to look at, look at how I'm writing the ratios. So look at, again, the word ratio. It's, it's a weird spelling. Um, the the T-I-O makes that show sound, OK? T-I show. Um, and now look at this. I'm going to do it in red. Look at this symbol right here. Now when we're writing, that's called a colon. And we use it in, a ma in math as well. And so the colon represents the idea of ratio. So when you see this, one, it's, we would say it, one, two, six, or one, two, two, or what's this? One to four. One to four. And one so that's a good example that I, that I really enjoy presenting to our instructors and that you can really see that they have a good chemistry going and they're bouncing off of each other. It's almost seamless where one ends up and one picks up. You can see that the instructor on the right was focusing more on the technical issues. So it's obvious that she's the IET or CTE instructor. She's the industry uh, professional. Uh, the instructor that's currently on the screen is focusing more on the vocabulary components. So as uh, the English language instructor, you're focusing more on the competencies that you already know that your students are probably struggling with. And that all goes back to the individual uh, learning plans of the student. So it's important for them. So this is one model. Uh, I'm going to show you a What is a model. ratio? And this is one where the technical instructor is up at the front of the class and the English language instructor is roaming the class and explaining it on a one-to-one -one basis to the students that they might see struggling. So let's take a look at this one now. So in this project, Project 7G, we are going to be working with uh, Lindsay Johnson, who is the director of Pools. We're going to go to here so we can look at the, the uh, e-text. Let's open that here. And a pivot chart. 
to analyze revenue from the aquatics program. So what does aquatics mean? Water, water, yes. So it's the swim, so it's the swimming pools, right? The Page 453. So um, let's see, how many files are we going to start with? To how many files will we turn in? We're gonna be. It's it's, it's in here. Yeah. Okay. So once again, it's a bit of a different way to approach it. There's there's no right or wrong way. As long as we get the the goals out there for the student, and as long as they're receiving the technical instruction and they're receiving the language instruction for them to be successful when it comes time for them to test and examine. Now, there's different models uh, that you can choose to adopt uh, to support your student. The most common model, as you see here, is a two-instructor approach, just because each instructor can more or less focus on uh, their, their area and in order to support the student. At the end of the day, it's all about supporting that student, because remember, they are an ESL and ABE, and helping to soothe that anxiety, that anxiety of, I'm not understanding, or this is too much for me. So you see here how there's always that extra level of support. Now, in some smaller districts or some uh, instructors that are, are qualified to do both, you might have an instructor that does both the technical and the English instruction. Um, just things to be cognizant of there. Um, it will be additional work for the instructor, um, and the, it, they will need to have a very good understanding of both uh, the, the CASAS and TABE exams, as well as their industry uh, materials and certification. But at the end of the day, it's up to the districts, it's up to the schools uh, to choose the method of instruction that will best support their students. So in okay, so let's talk about how the state is going to measure um, our successes uh, in these programs, whether they're considered successful or not successful. And there's four main points. There's a fifth one, but these are the main uh, four. So we're looking for lit literacy completion points. How do you get there? You have the student pass a functional level of ESOL or ABE. We're looking for industry certification. We want them to go and get their phlebotomy license. We want them to go and get their medical assisting license or their HVAC license. That will be another uh, measure that the state of Florida will be evaluating. You want to see the students that are full program completers. You want to be able to track their attendance and be able to say, this student was here so many hours, present that to the state and you will get the measurable skill gain. And the op occupational completion points within these programs. Uh, most of these programs will be divided into uh, different trimesters. So at the point that you say, okay, uh, you've finished the basic healthcare worker component of the program, you will earn an occupational completion point. So different things to consider, uh, different things to start tracking uh, as school districts uh, to make sure that you are successful. And these are other little tidbits that will help you retain the students because each time that the, the student completes one of these steps, it's another little incentive. It's another uh, bit of a success story that you can present to the student. Okay, we've already mentioned um, that you need to have established uh, relationships with your community partners. They're going to drive a lot of your inst uh, instruction or uh, deciding which programs you offer, and they're going to be a good source of new students because as what they may as well want to upskill their current uh, employment pool, so they could refer students to you guys. So it's very important to have that good relationship. Okay, so let's get to the point of the presentation where we start talking about support. Um, as you guys might have already seen, the IPDE website has recently been renovated, and there are full uh, sections of the website that are dedicated to IET. I invite you to please go through them. There's a wealth of resources. We have all sorts of presentations, webinars. We are also going around the states into your uh, school districts and regions, and we're doing face-to-face -face presentation, so we invite you to sign up to those. Um, but if you're ever kind of at a crossroads with a program or have a question, uh, please go to the uh, IPDE website or reach out to one of us. This is an example of the IET page where you can see 
Uh, there's there's different sections where you can go even into boot camps, implementation strategies, uh, the career pathways, which is a very important aspect of what we've discussed today. So the resources available, it's out there. Uh, just please know uh, that you can access it to access it and make it unique to your own school districts. Something that is on the EPTE website is the playbook developed by the uh, Florida Department of Education. Uh, as of now, as you guys know, the IET uh, concept has gone through a couple of different iterations uh, since it was developed, but this is where all the latest information, requirements, uh, we talked about measurable skills gains, uh, strategies to retain students, this is where you're going to find a lot of that information, and it's intended to assist programs with implementation, um, and it also provides work streams, videos, and you can access this through the IPTE website as well. So this is the point in the presentation. We've got about 15 minutes left uh, where I'd like to open it up to your questions because uh, I find that Every time you think you've got it figured out, someone else will, will have something that they've encountered that you've never seen before. Uh, so I love sharing and I, I invite you to, on the Q&A portion or on the chat portion up here, you guys can go ahead and put in your questions. I think we have two, so let's go ahead and check them out here. Okay, so we have a question uh, regarding the, the co-teaching aspect of it and whether the instructors, so how can we word this? In your school districts, you might have you know, CTE or, or technical instructors that have been doing this for a long time and they've pretty much been the sole instructor in their classroom and now you're asking for them to share the time with that student. Um, that's why I mentioned the chemistry is going to be key. Um, I know there are administrators on, on this uh, presentation. That's where you guys kind of have to bring everyone together and establish the strategies of how you're gonna get there. You can't just throw people into a room and say, teach these competencies and we'll see you in six months. You need to set up you know, uh, periodic uh, check-ins, see how it's going, a strategy to develop these lesson plans together and, and get that chemistry going. It's gonna be super important. Do we have any other questions? Let's see. Okay, so the folks from South Bay Correctional uh, are enjoying it. So that's another uh, point that we like to mention. IET is a concept that can benefit all sorts of, of populations, and, and we're also diverse across the state of Florida. But the main point to establish is that you're giving the student a bigger bang for the buck. You're giving them all sorts of instruction during the same time frame uh, and shortening that overall window of education. Let's see if there's any other questions. Okay, a very good question. And it's asking, would the basic life support, and that's uh, pretty much the CPR, uh, uh, certificate, would that be considered a credential or a certification for IET? And the answer is that the state of Florida has said no. Uh, it is a component of, the, of a lot of the overall licensure requirements for the healthcare classes. So if you're in a medical assisting course, a requirement will be your BLS certificate. You need to be CPR certified. But the actual uh, CPR certification itself will not be considered uh, having met that licensure requirement. So a very, a very good question, and it's one that's come up a lot. Yes, so uh, we have another question asking if there's a place to find the approved certifications. We invite you to go to the Florida Department of Education website, uh, where a lot of these curriculum frameworks are housed. Uh, you would go down to the IET section, and you can select your program, and it's going to give you the framework. Um, it's also going to give you, and that brings me to another component, how to get your instructors certified or who can teach these courses, because it can get a little confusing. Um, an example being that for the CNA course, which is one of our shorter courses, 
uh, it would have to be a nurse. A medical assistant could not teach that course. And that's uh, some challenges that some folks have been running into. So I do invite you to go to that uh, Florida Department of Education website, look at the IET frameworks, and that's where you'll see the certifications, uh, what kind of instructor you need, and the program hours for each of these programs. I'll leave it uh, one more minute to see if there's any other questions. Okay, so just a comment here, and I do agree with it. It's one of the biggest success uh, ways to measure your success is going to be overall, overall your transition at the end of these programs. Are these students becoming licensed? Are these students uh, going out into their selected uh, careers? Uh, how are you stacking those licensures? Are they coming back to you? So a lot of good things uh, to focus on. So with that being said, I want to thank you all for being a great audience. You had great questions. And uh, just want to remind you all that the next uh, webinar for IPDA is going to be on April 5th. And it's going to be go going over uh, an online support guide for Florida administrators of adult education. Uh, if you guys don't mind, just there's a feedback survey that it's going to be up on your screens. These surveys help us to continually improve. Uh, they help us to kind of pick topics that are useful to you guys because um, it's all about infor in informing you in the areas that you guys uh, want information in. So please complete the survey. And once again, uh, thank you all. And feel free to reach out if you have any questions.